Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. In today's video, I'm going to make this bedside table for my daughter, Jessica. It's been six months or so since I last made a Scrapwood Challenge video, so I thought it'd be a great way to start the new year. I've picked out some camphor laurel scraps, and the first thing I need to do is to mill and square them up. After planing one of the faces and one edge on all the pieces, I then trim the pieces as wide as each piece can be on the table saw. And notice my fancy new personalised push stick, it's pretty cool. It was kindly made by Drew of Fisher's Shop, so thanks Drew, I love it. Next I'm resawing the pieces close to the finished thickness, ready to put through the thicknesser. That was a fair amount of wood to make just a few boards, but the remaining pieces will come in useful for another project. The first thing I'll make is the top, bottom and side panels, and I'm just laying them out, and before I glue them together, I'll roughly cut them to length. Even if you're not interested in making a bedside table, there's still some interesting elements in this project, like the rounded corners, which could be incorporated into other furniture projects. After scraping off the glue squeeze out, I sanded them smooth and I did make sure to align them well when I glued and clamped them as they're a touch too wide to fit into my thicknesser. Next I took them to the table saw and trimmed them to their final size. Next I need to make some corner pieces to join the panels together and it'd be easy to do that with a piece with a grain running in this direction but that won't work because when it gets glued to the panel it's going to be fighting with the grain on the panel so instead I need to make up a block where the grain runs in the same direction as the panel. I found a couple of widish pieces that should work. I planed a face and an edge off camera and now I'm trimming them to width. I'm being careful again to try and line these pieces up well. I won't be putting them through the thickness because of the direction of the grain. They came out pretty well, but I still cleaned up one face and one edge with the hand plane. I then trimmed up the opposite edge on the table saw and I didn't trim up the last face as there really isn't any need as that face is on the waist side of the block. I made this block just as a test and now I can use that to set the fence on the table saw and the router when I come to make the final corner pieces. I've angled the blade over so next I'll cut these 45s and I'm doing that before I cut the radius on the bottom. The reason for that is if I cut the radius first, I end up with a point there and that point will fall down into the kerf of the table saw insert. I can still set the fence though because I can just hold it tight up against the fence here and then set it the right distance.
to attach the corner pieces to the panel, I'll just glue them, but I will use biscuits to keep it aligned when I put it all together. You could reinforce the joint with dowels or even splines. So next I'm going to make a cut across here and that will give me a face to reference the biscuit jointer off. For anyone that's interested, I've been busy making plans for this project, which I reckon have turned out great. I've had a lot of fun with the project with some challenges like figuring out how to do the corners. But now that's all been worked out, the plans are very easy to follow along. For a limited time, I've gone ahead and bundled these plans with six more of my woodworking projects at 78% off. Whether you're a beginner or a weekend hobbyist, these plans were designed to be easy to follow along. Simply click the link in the description below before this offer of 78% off expires and you'll be able to access my woodworking seven plan bundle. And as always, thanks for your support. I've cut all the slots in the panels, now I need to do them on the corners and because this is thicker than what the panel is, I need to change the position of the fence on the biscuit joiner and the reason I've left that thicker is I want to shape the outside radius after it's all glued together to match the panels. So what I've done is I've cut a slot in a test piece and you can see that matches up there. I've uh, cut through it so I can use that there to transfer the marks onto the corner and then I can use those marks to set the height on the fence of the joiner. The biscuits will add little strength to the joint, the glue will be enough to hold those but the biscuits will help align and keep the joints together when gluing them up. That looks pretty good so next I'll fit a back panel which is a piece of 3mm plywood. I'll do that by making grooves in the panels and I'll do that on the table saw. The grooves need to continue around into the corners, they're a bit trickier to do but not too difficult and I'll do those by hand. Obviously you should try and cut the grooves as neat as possible but as long as the panel fits that's the main thing and they won't be easily seen sitting at the back of the cabinet. Before I can assemble the cabinet I need to fit a shelf which I prepared off camera and that will fit into dados in the side panels. Next I need to cut the shelf to its final length but I found out that it was way too short. I think I made it with measurements from memory and not checking my drawings. Anyway I made another and the other board will get used in another project.
that's dry fitted together but I have one more thing to do before gluing it up I'm going to add a bevel to the front edges to add a little more interest the panels are easy enough to do by running it through the table saw but I'll shape the bevels on the corners after the cabinet has been assembled I made a plywood square with a corner cut away just so I could check the inside of the cabinet for square and then put a clamp across to make any adjustments. My bank clamps aren't quite strong enough to pull it all together tightly so I added a couple of ratchet straps which did the trick. Next I'll shape the outside radius on the corners and to help mark it out and for somewhere to put the point of the compass I shaped a small piece of plywood. I've angled the blade over to 45 degrees on the table saw and I'll cut each corner at that angle up to the radius line. Next I'm setting the blade to 22 and a half degrees and then make all those cuts. That will form a curve of sorts which I'll then be able to smooth out with a sander. I just need to trim the last bit of waste off flush with the panels with the blade set at 90 degrees. I wasn't thinking here as the fence will need to be reset after making that first cut. I can do one more cut first though on the other side of the cabinet. By moving the sander consistently it was very easy to smooth them out and form an even curve and each corner took less than a couple of minutes with a 120 grit disc. I reckon that looks great, the last thing to do on the cabinet is shape the bevels on the corners and I'll do those by carving away most of the waste and then refine them with a file and sandpaper. Now the cabinet's finished, I'll start making the door. That will have a Kumiko panel and I'll start with that first. I'll go through the Kumiko pretty quickly as I've shown that a few times already in past videos. First I'm breaking down the pieces into blocks and then into smaller box and then cutting them into thin strips. The strips then need to be planed to a consistent thickness. A 
series of half lap joints are then cut on a handful of the strips to make the grid. Next I'll start cutting the pieces that make up the pattern and roughly cutting those to length and then I cut the angle joints on each end with a chisel using a jig to keep them consistent. The first part of the pattern is a diagonal across each square of the grid. Each triangle left by the diagonals gets filled out with three more pieces, two of which are the same and then one small piece to lock them in. Before I put the last pieces in, I thought now was as good a time as any to trim away the outside of the grid. It needs sanding but I'll put it aside for now and start making the door. I prepared these pieces for the rails and the styles off camera. Next I'll put a groove along the inside of the styles and a tenon on the ends of the rails to fit. I make one cut and then flip the piece around 180 degrees and then make a second cut leaving a perfectly centered groove. I've made the door pieces wider than I need with the intention of trimming down the door after it's been assembled. The styles do have an open section of groove which I did think about filling in with the strip but as it gets covered with the Kumiko panel I decided it wasn't needed. That fits into the opening nicely so now I'll fit some brass hinges and I know after my last video I really should have made the hinges but these are smaller than the hinges I can make with the hinge jig I made in that video and this video is taking long enough without stopping to make another jig.
The door needs a catch, but I'll fit that later on, so next I'll start working on the legs. The legs will get turned on the lathe, but first I'll roughly cut out blanks on the bandsaw. The top section needs to stay straight and parallel to fit into a mortise, so I'll mark where the top of the taper starts and then set the diameter of the smaller end of the taper next. To fix the legs to the underneath, I prepared these pieces off camera and next I need to drill holes in those for the legs to slot into. I want the legs to angle forwards and out to the side as well and that's quite tricky to set that up to drill the hole on the right angle. So what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to put them across each other like that and I can drill a hole with one angle along the center line of the piece if that makes any sense and that makes it a little bit easier to set up and the legs will still face forwards and out to the side. Here I'm marking a six degree angle through the center point of the board. I can then use that to line up the center of the smaller pieces. I'll hold them together with tape while I center the assembly to the bottom panel. I could have joined the leg support pieces, but I didn't feel it was needed. I could have glued the legs in as it is, but I decided to take the supports back off to do it and I marked the pieces so I knew where they went when I put it back together. Next I'll trim and level the feet and for this method you need to make sure your workbench is level first and then use wedges underneath the feet to level up the cabinet. From there it's easy to mark out and then cut the legs. <laughs> 
Next, I'll turn a small knob from a piece of dowel that I had lying around from a past project. That's the last piece in place, next I gave the whole thing a good sand ready for finish. For the finish I'm using hard wax oil, it'll get two coats leaving overnight and sanding between them. Kumiko isn't the easiest thing to apply finish to, you just have to get in there and keep checking it from every angle. And the last thing to do is add a catch. I really like how that turned out, I think it looks fantastic, Jess loves it too, it was a lot of fun, especially with the problem solving, trying to figure out how to do those corners. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did please like and subscribe, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.